This is Sydney, a typical 21 year old with loving family, friends, and a boyfriend. Sydney was studying to be a nurse and had a bright, bright future ahead until the night of September 2nd when everything changed. It all started with a movie night with my boyfriend. He had a friend named Quentin, and he said that he was coming through. I had just told Aaron that I was going to bed. I had only been in bed for about five minutes, and then I had heard a horrible scream. I leaned up out of the bed. When I looked up, there was Quentin with a gun in my face. I had begged him, no, 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 please don't, and then he shot me. It's been just a few weeks since that horrific incident. Sydney joins us along with her mother, Amanda, and Sydney, I am so, so sorry that you had to go through this, and yet I am so impressed, as we all are, that you're here to share your story just a few weeks after this all happened. I, part of an emotional recovery is a physical recovery. We sent her to see eye surgeon Dr. Brian Boxer-Walkler to see what might be done. What did you find? We found that the bullet destroyed the back of the eye, but the front part of the eye is intact. And Sydney, that's really good news because there was some discussion of whether or not the eye has to be removed, but I'm really happy to report that it doesn't have to be removed. <laughs> and then you're gonna be fit with a prosthesis, which is a shell that's gonna be fit behind your eyelids, and it's going to have an artificial iris painted on there to match your other eye. Okay. And cosmetically, it's gonna look really quite good. Okay. Yeah. And ocularist Stephen Haddad mm -hmm. is gonna do that for you, and he's gonna do that for free. I looked at your initial photos, I mean, you had a pretty significant dent where you had the entry wound of that bullet, and you are healing so, so well. So let's stay the course, let's give it time, and I'm telling you here, down the line, I'm gonna offer you fillers and laser treatments as necessary. We can get that entry wound to the point where you won't know that anything happened, and I'm gonna do that for you. Jalissa met a nice guy at church, well-mannered, very polite, even went to Bible study. Everything seemed so normal until one night, things went horribly wrong. I received a call from a detective. He needed me to rush down to the hospital because my sister had been brutally attacked. I'd asked him what exactly happened, and he said she was stabbed to the face. There was a lot of blood loss, and I don't think she's going to make it. I yelled out, he tried to kill her. So earlier in the day, my sister had told me that she had an argument with her ex-boyfriend and that she wanted nothing to do with him. Approximately 7.20 p.m., he went over, knocked on the door. She saw him. He was standing naked in front of her. As she tried to close the door, he pushed his way in. And as she tried to call her pastor for help, he began to violently beat her. My nephew's door opened to his bedroom. She screamed at my nephew, locked the door and not come out until she told him to. He grabbed her, threw her on the floor, and that's when she saw him standing there with the knife. And he started to stab her over and over to her face, her head, her neck. Nothing could have prepared me for what I saw when they rolled my sister out of that CAT scan room. Her eyes were gushing blood, gashes all over her head. It was just bleeding all over the place. Julissa survived that gruesome attack. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Julissa. The docs were saying you weren't likely to survive, that pretty much you weren't going to have any vision. They wanted to yeah. give you a glass eye. Yes. Yet you persevered. How, how's your vision today? I know you have the corrective lenses on, but what yes. can you see? Uh, well, actually, I have 30% of my right eye. Oh, and I, I see colors. I, I can see, it's just, you know, very blurry. You know, limited, the point is 30%, I came from 0%. Came out of the darkness. 
Brian, first of all, just tell everyone who you are. Uh, my name is Brian Meck, and I'm the CEO of a company called eSight, and uh, we make electronic uh, glasses that are specifically designed for people with visual impairments, sometimes very severe visual impairments, to restore a significant amount of vision for those folks. Um, and we're gonna see today if they work uh, here for Julissa. We're gonna put these on right now. <laughs> You're amazing. So now that you have those on, Julissa, what, what can you see? I see everyone. <laughs> Every year, 10 million women and men experience some form of domestic violence. For our next guest, it took away 10 years of her life. When I was about 20 years old, I worked as a waitress in a restaurant. And I met this guy in his 40s. I was very vulnerable at that time. I had just broken up with a boyfriend, so Alan was a nice guy, I thought. He slapped me upside the head and I heard the snap and I knew that my nose was broken but I uh, thought there was a blood clot in my nose and I pulled out what I assumed was my septum. It was like cartilage. I couldn't go get help. Over the course of those 10 years and subsequently, what's been the toughest part? <sighs> the isolation. I hid my face basically for 20 years and it, it wasn't just the physical, it was the emotional that was tied to that. I didn't have any friends. Um, I couldn't go do anything social. How do you feel about yourself right now, and how do you feel about who you are when you do look in the mirror? Um, I still struggle with that. When I look at my profile, that's when I break down. I, I do see me now when I look in the mirror. I see me. I'm happier now, and I'm on a path of healing. And to be here, it kind of took a lot. I want to introduce you to someone um, who has a special, special message for you. Deborah Alessi is the CEO of Face Forward and founder and she has a message she'd like to share with you. Well, Face Forward provide reconstructive surgery for women and children and men around the world who are survivors of domestic violence and human trafficking. We're gonna give you a gift. We're gonna provide the surgery, airfare, and accommodation to change your world. I waited 20 years for somebody to help me. It means everything to me. You're so deserving. <laughs> Who's ready to see Donna? I know I am. <laughs> Donna, come on out and join us. Wow. How do you feel? Kind of like brand new me because um, um, I get to truly start over now, and um, that's amazing to me.